Welcome to Peak Worship. We're so excited that you tuned in today. Pastor Dan has a powerful word for you, and we are believing and praying that it's going to change your life. We are in a series. I actually, we actually preached a message um, last week. What if we remember? What if we remember? And that message really started cultivating some things within me because it was a message about what if we remember Jesus, God, before we make the next decision? What if we remember God before we, we made the next choice or, or, or bought the house or, or got married or, or chose some friends or, or whatever the case is? What if we remember God before each and every thing? And so, you know what? It really led to my heart to, to speak about today is your consequence your consequence. So we're going to talk about your consequence today. I'm going to talk about my consequences. Oh, I'm going to talk about some things. And this whole series is, is named Under Construction. As you can see, we have our portage on here. We have some toilet paper. We have our hard hats. We have some electrical wire. You know, we, we, we've, the whole church has been under construction for the last seven months. We've been able to purchase the place. We've been under construction, painting, remodeling, knocking down walls. And we're under construction. But the construction that I'm talking about isn't the church right now. The under construction that I'm talking about is his temple. Well, that is the church, isn't it? No, that's you. You're the temple. You're the temple where Holy Spirit wants to be. You're the temple. And so we're under construction because, you know, what? after last week, I just realized that there's so many of us that we don't put God first. We don't remember him first. And the reason why we don't remember God so many times before a decision is because we're not thinking of the consequence. Oh, it's easy to sit there and think of a choice. But you know what? Until you really think of the consequence, there's brings no meaning to the choice. How many times have we chosen something and the consequence wasn't too good? That's why we're under construction, because you know what? I need to be under construction. There's some things I need to change in my life. I can always grow closer to God. I just because I'm standing up here preaching doesn't mean that, you know what? I have it all together. Doesn't mean that I'm set apart, you know, just all holy over each and every one of you. Let me just tell you, I put on my pants just like everyone else. I put on my clothes like everyone else. I get up and dust myself off. I love the Lord. I believe in the Lord. I want to encourage others. You know, I don't want you to ever put me on a pedestal because no man should deserve to be put on a pedestal. Pedestal. The only one that should be put on a pedestal is God himself. But see, he took himself down, says, serve us. So that's why we're under construction, because right after this, after this series under construction, I'm going to teach you about how the church became an establishment instead of a movement. See, the ministry should be a movement instead of establishment. But we're going to talk about that another day, because I want to talk about your consequence. See, I've had some consequences in my life that's really um, changed the whole outlook of my life. Uh, I've had some consequences that, you know, what? I've been on my knees crying in tears from pain and hurt. I've had consequences where I've lost friends. I've had consequences where it's been physical pain. Whether I was a kid and my, my hind end kind of got warmed up, that was a consequence that I didn't like either. But you know what? There's some physical consequences and there's some spiritual consequences. You know, I've walked through life and, and there's some consequences that, you know, I, I'm not happy about that. I, I wish I would have thought of the consequence before I made the decision. I, I wish I would have thought of the consequence before I, I would have taken this option. I, I, I just, you know, there's just some things that the consequence, oh, the consequence is everything. And see, if I would have focused on the consequence of this decision, I would have made a different decision. If I would have looked at the consequence, I would have went back and says, what if I remember to put God before I make the decision? I would have lined it up with his word. Oh, see, I know that all of us has made some, you know, wrong choices. I know that we, you know, that's, that's humanity. You know what? We, we do things that just, you know what? We wish that we wouldn't have. We, I bet we all have a consequence now that, that we can remember right now in our hearts that it was hurting. It was painful. Oh, and not only physically, but maybe spiritually. Oh, maybe this consequence, you know, it separated me some, from family. Maybe this consequence set me apart, you know, from, from, some, from some friends. Maybe this consequence was something that, you know what, didn't, it didn't work out in the, the workplace and maybe it costed me my job. Maybe this consequence, it, it just, you know, my business went under. I went bankrupt because ugh, this is the consequence of the decision. Maybe you have a consequence that, you know what, you didn't study for a test and then you get an F. 
And now you're suffering with the consequence that you have an F. Now you're suffering with the consequence that you didn't pass. Now you're suffering that, you know what? Oh, you know, I, I lied to my employer. So now I have the consequence that, you know what? I, I'm going to be, you know, terminated or I'm going to be written up on an action plan. Oh, I, I've had this consequence that, you know what? You know, I, I'm trying to, you know, I, I want to run everything. I want to be, uh, you know, a, a dictator to everything. You know, you know, so many times within parents, I know, you know, being a parent, I, I want to make sure that I, I give my son the freedom to do. I want to direct him and guide him, pour in wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But I also want to be able to back up and let him be the man that he needs to be. Let him make the choices that he needs to be. And I know as parents, it's so easy that we step over our boundaries and we want to control our children. We want to control the situation. We want to control the whole family, the whole life. And then our consequence is whenever someone, the child has enough, then all of a sudden they start backing away from the parents. That's a consequence. Something that we don't like. Consequence. We all have a consequence that, you know what, we wish we could take back or redo. We all have a consequence that, you know what, it's kept us up at night worrying we all have a consequence that, you know what, uh, we, we've cried over. Uh, we, we've had something spiritually that's, you know, I, I, I made this choice. And, you know, what, I, I, oh, my consequence is I'm grieving for sorrow and repentance to God. Our consequence. We need to focus on our consequence. Oh, what's going to happen? See, let's just define consequence. See, consequence is a result or effect of an action or condition. Oh, see, a consequent comes back to say, OK, you know what? I, I, I'm not going to wear my hard hat on this job site. So the consequence is when I get smacked in the head by whether someone's just upset with me and they use the hammer or something falls off out of a window. You know, the consequence is my head's going to hurt. I'm going to have a knot. It's not going to feel too good. That's a consequence. But now if I choose to wear the hard hat, now my consequence is that whatever object is going to come down is going to hit the hard hat and it's not going to hit my head. And thank you, Lord, that, you know, what? as long as it's not a huge bunch of rocks or a steel beam, I should be OK. I should be able to get up and walk. A consequence. How many times have we made certain decisions within our lives that are consequence? Man, I wish I could have changed that. If I'd only looked at the consequence before, I would have put God in the midst of making the decision. And then my consequence would have been a different turnout. Let's just go into some scripture. I want to read some scripture. And I, 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 want, I want the Lord to, to reveal to us what, what he's saying about a consequence, what he is saying about making the right choices, what, what we need to be doing within our lives. And it starts off in Deuteronomy 28, 63. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you. Well, hallelujah, that's a great consequence. I, I love the blessing. I love to be multiplied. I love my checking book to be multiplied. I love, you know, I want my son to have wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I want my barns full. I want my presses overflowing. Hallelujah. But then God also says, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you not to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. Oh, wow. I've made a few of those consequences that I didn't like. I, I, I've been in those situations where that consequence was exactly that. Because we go on to Galatians 6. And it says six, seven, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Oh, so if I sow, if I make the right choice, then that means I'm going to be fruitful. God's going to bless. God's going to. Oh, you know, this you know is a consequence of Snickers bars and Oreos and chocolate milk. Amen. I mean, this is a consequence. This is a choice. This is something that I'm on the treadmill working out. I've got to change this. Now, let me show you a picture of me at a younger age. Ex absolutely great body. You know, that, see, that's a consequence that I'm still working on. OK, but you know what? It's a consequence. Blessing something good. Something that I'm working on. A lot of work. See, we have a lot of consequences like that. And if we take a look at the consequence, oh, if I take a look at the consequence, those oh, double stuffed Oreos, I would realize how heavy two of those are on that spoon. And I would... 
probably just knock one off and eat the other one by a, at a time. But you know what? If I take a look at it and realize, you know, it's, it's not the best thing for me. I don't eat, have to eat the whole pack at one setting. I can just have two or three and then I made the right choice. Now my consequences are going to be different. Now I'm going to, well, I don't know about that. But you know what? My consequences... Let's see what a wrong consequence actually does within God. What does God say about this? But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Wow. Our consequences. You know what? We've made some wrong consequences that, you know what? It's kept us apart from God. You know what? I can't be a part of that. See, you know what? Whenever they go out to build a skyscraper, see, they look at the consequences before they start building. Well, how, why do they do that? Well, because they look at the consequence. Well, if, OK, what if the soil isn't the right soil? Oh, what, what if it's quicksand? That means it's not going to be stable. All of a sudden, if the, the ground starts cracking, oh, you know what? My foundation's going to crack. So the consequence of building on something that's not right could mean it's fatal to others. Oh, are we building a skyscraper that's going to be a cemetery? Or are we building a skyscraper that's going to have life within it? See, overseas, I've seen other buildings where they haven't had the footers. They didn't put steel in the footers. Oh, after they build this 20 or 30 story skyscraper, after they get a little bit of rocking or settling within the soil, the foundation cracks. Well, there's no rebar steel within the concrete. So all of a sudden, you know what? Down at the first floor, second floor, all this weight crumbles. The building comes down. See, if they would have had their consequence in mind of what would have happened, then all of a sudden they could have backed up and said, you know what? I, I need to put some steel in this concrete. Oh, see, whenever the engineers set out, they sit there and say, oh, you know what? What's the consequences of, you know what? What's the consequence if this wind hits 120 miles an hour? What if this tornado hits this building? What if this flood comes this way? What if we lose electricity? How do we light the exit signs? What? They're looking at all the consequences to build this building. Are we looking at the consequences in our life to build a life that God wants us to build? Are we looking at the consequences that it's going to help my marriage if I make this decision? Oh, we're going to go on because I want to talk to you because right here in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy, it's oh God has laid it out. Let's just look at Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and thy seed may live. So as long as I choose life, if I look at the consequence, you know, that I'm making and I'm making a choice on the consequence, you know what? It's going to give me life. That means, you know what? My seed, my son is going to reap from the harvest. All of a sudden, you know what? Things are going to be a little different in his life. He might not have to go through the things that I had to go through. You know what? He might be able to step up above and take an extra step. He might start at the eight foot ladder instead of down at the ground. He might not be digging himself out. He might be at the extension ladder already reaching heights. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy, of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob to give them. God's saying, you know what? I have blessings and I have cursings. You know what? If you follow this path, you know what? Your cursing is going to be your consequence. If you follow this path, your blessing is going to be your consequence. You know what? I, we need to start looking at the consequence. If I make this decision in my life, it, it, what's the outcome going to be? Is it going to be a cursing consequence or is it going to be a blessing consequence? Because if I say, oh, this isn't going to be a good one. I, I, let me re, rethink this. Now I'm going to say, what if I remember to put God in the midst of this decision? Then I'm going to go back to the word and I'm going to find out if it's right, if it's good. Is this a blessing or is it a cursing? Uh, which direction do I need to go, Lord? I'm telling you, there's some things coming down the line that could be passed within this country. And if it is, God's about to shake the foundation of some churches. And I'm telling you this, I'm not even going to expand on it, but there's some things that's coming down that churches, if it's passed, is going to have to make a decision. Which way am I going to go? Am I going to pick the blessing or am I going to pick the cursing? Am I going to stand for God's word and I'm going to take whatever is given to me? Uh, or am I going to not stand for God's word so I can get out of something. 
I'm telling you, mark my words with all my heart, there's a shaking that's going to come. I want you to know there's blessings and cursings because when that shaking comes, I want you to be built on a good foundation. I want you to take a look at the consequence of your next decision, of your next choice. I want you to add God in the midst of it so that way you make a wise decision, not of the world decision, but of God's decision. That You know what? It's going to cause me pain if I choose this way, but this is the way God said. God said, you know what? He took a beating for us. His disciples took a beating for him. You know what? There might be some things in life that we might take that we don't like, but as long as we make the right decision for God, we'll always be on the blessing side. Cursing. It says in Deuteronomy 28, and I encourage you to read all of Deuteronomy 28. It starts in 28, 15. It talks about the cursing. It talks about what God's will do, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be, shall be thy basket in thy store. Oh, these are just all the different cursings right here in Deuteronomy. You know, cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Oh, cursed shall thou be when thou comest and cursed shall thou be when thou goest. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing. Oh, and rebuke in, in all that thou settest thy hand up unto for to do until thou be destroyed. Wow. You know, the Lord shall smite thee with a cons uh, consumption and with a fever and with a with an inflammation. Oh, extreme burning. Oh, you know what? There's just things that, you know what? Oh, God's going to, oh, you know, if you don't follow him accordingly, if you, I'm just telling you, you know what? There's things of the world that isn't good for you. There's things that I'm trying to save you from. I don't want you to go here in this place. I don't want you to be cursed. I want you to be blessed. That's the reason why God says, you know, I'm sending my son to destroy all that, that you can have life, have life abundantly, that you can enjoy what I've given you that you don't have to worry about tomorrow. All you have to do is enjoy today. But take a look at the consequence because a consequence will last you forever in cases. See, there's consequences that we feel the pain and it's just momentarily. And then there's consequences that it lasts for a long time. Amen. And God is saying, you know what? I, I want you to look at the consequence because you know what? It, this might be a lifetime effect that, you know, what? you might not ever get this friend back. Oh, see, you, you might not see that family member again because they might be in a car wreck. So you might not have a chance to say, I'm sorry for yelling. I'm sorry for what I've done. Thou shall betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. What a cursing that is. Hmm. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies. That's not, I don't, I don't think that's, that's, that's that good. You know what? The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore, um, sore and cannot be healed. Oh, wow. These are really good. You know, I, I don't know about you, but those are not the kind of consequences that I really want in my life. Let me read you the consequences that I do want in my life, that I want you to have in your life. And it's in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, and it's a blessing. God said, cursing or blessing. And it's, his word says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto thy voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Wow. Blessed shall be the basket and thy store. Oh, that's that's your income. That that's, means your storehouse is going to be blessed. That means he's going to take care of your business. You know what? He's going to take care of all your opportunities that you have. You know, are you making the right decisions? Are, are you learning from God's word? Are you looking at the consequence? You know what? If I make this decision with my business, what's the consequence? Well, the consequence is, you know what? If I buy this and this, I, it might put me in a situation financially that I might go broke and I might have to close down the doors. But see, if I go this, like I, like the, oh man, like God's word says to, because now that I'm looking at the consequence and it doesn't look good, let me back up on what God says in Proverbs, because Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It's how you run your business. We'll have anybody that's an entrepreneur, we'll do a study just for you on Proverbs, because that's how you should operate your business is through Proverbs. You know what? So let me look in Proverbs and let me gain some wisdom. God says, oh, God said, don't go that way. 
Oh, no, no. He said go this way. So now I can only afford one item instead of the five that I want. Oh, see the consequence. I weigh the consequences within our church. Oh, now if we do this, what's going to be the consequence? Oh, wow. That's not what I thought. So let me line it up with the word. Okay, now this is the direction that I need to go. But Lord, I'd love to have this and this and this. But I'm saying this. So we're going to go this because I'm going to ultimately receive a blessing instead of a cursing. Oh, see, the Lord shall be established. Oh, the Lord shall establish thee in a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Oh, the Lord also will set up a table in front of your enemies as long as your consequence is based off of his word. Oh, isn't that nice to know that, you know what? It, it, let's see. I, I have this person that I really don't like. I'm a little bit angry with this individual. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go while he's sleeping. It's my neighbor. And I'm going to go and I'm going to puncture his tires. I'm going to key his car. And you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. He shuts his light, light, um, lights off at one o'clock. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, what's the consequence of that? Okay, he has video cameras on the outside. The police shows up. I get a nice set of bracelets and I go to jail and I don't see my family for a while. Okay, now let's, what if I remember God in this situation? Oh, pray for your enemy. Give all vengeance to the Lord and take none upon thyself. You mean I got to let that guy go? You know what he did? Do you know what I can do? Blessing or cursing. Okay, Lord, I only knock one of the tires out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but I want the blessing and not the cursing. See, we have to remember, I'm not here to say your, your bad consequence is, is something that, we, that I want you to hold over your head. I don't want you to sit there and think, well, I have consequences that, you know what, uh, just, you know, I made some bad ones. You know what, let me just tell you one of my consequences. I've made some wrong choices in my life. I had a bad consequence that made me hit my knees, cry out to the Lord. And my next words was, Lord, Father God, forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus. See, he can turn around a bad consequence to a good one. So don't minimize your bad ones. I'm just trying to say, let's try to eliminate them as much as possible. Let's walk in the, the blessing instead of the cursing. Let's line up everything that we do in our lives according to God's word. Oh, you know what? I, I, there's some things that we learn through some hard times, through the bad consequences. But I don't want you to walk through those if you don't have to. I want you to receive and understand that, you know what? We don't have to walk in the valleys all the time. There's certain times that we're going to walk in the valleys. But you know what? Through those valleys, God wants to see if are, are we going to look at the consequences and then still line up the word in our life? Are we still are we still believing God when I'm in the valley or do we only believe God when we're on the peak? Are we looking at God and praising God whenever we're in the promised land or are we also praising God when we're in the wilderness? Am I looking at all the consequences in my life? Let's take a look at Moses, Numbers 2011. And we, we know this. And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. Oh, in verse 12, that, we think that's great. And look, and, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation to the land I have given them. Oh, see a blessing and a cursing. See, see, we see that, you know what? Moses wasn't exempt from it either. Moses wasn't exempt from God's word. I told you to speak to the rock, but instead, you know what? You smit, you smitten the rock. You, you decided to beat it. You, you wanted to break it up in pieces. I went ahead and delivered for the sheep. I wanted to make sure that, you know what? I quenched your thirst, but I'm just telling you, you didn't give me glory and honor. You didn't follow what I said. And so many times in our life, we don't look at the consequence. If Moses would have sat back and said, you know what? If I do this and I'm not obedient, I won't be going over in the promised land. Oh, so you know what? Instead of smiting this rock, I'm going to go ahead and speak to it. Rock, you're going to give some water. Oh, it didn't go. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not upset because they're yelling and, you know, they're yelling and murmuring. I'm going to go ahead and speak to the rock again. Rock, I said, give it up. Rock, give it up. It will give it up as long as we stand on God's word. 
There are some situations in your life that you don't think you can change the consequence, but we have to stand firm on God's word. We have to know that God said this and it shall happen. We have to stand firm through the windstorm that we're built on a good foundation because I looked at the consequence before I built the foundation. Oh, I know my kids are going to always go back to God because I built them on a good foundation. I looked at the consequence. I didn't like hell for my children, so I gave them the word. So I know that they're going to, God said in his word, oh, you feed them. You grow them up in my word and they'll always come back. So I know with all my heart that God's word is true. So they're going to come back. So I looked at the consequence. I fed them whether they wanted it or not. How about David? How about the consequence? You know, he made some good choices, but then he was also on the balcony and he looked out and he, what if? If he would have only thought, you know what? The consequence of this isn't going to be a blessing. It's going to be a cursing. So you know what? Let me just go ahead and close my eyes and turn back around, put my robe back on, and let me get on my horse and go out to battle. Amen. See, because the thing was is he didn't choose that. So it costed him a child in the midst of it, a consequence of repentance and remorse to God. And that's what we have to understand is we need to understand that we want to have a consequence that we don't have to go back and repent to God. Oh, it should be something within our hearts that we want to choose so right. We want that right path. We want to live according to God's word that we oh, because I don't want to hurt God. I don't want I don't want to have to repent. I don't want to have the sorrow and the crying. I want to make the Lord happy. So I'm going to look at the consequence before I make the choice. I'm going to look at the consequence in my life before I choose. That way I'm going to go back to God's word and see what he says about it. Peter, how about his consequence? Oh, man, you know what? Hey, you know, what? his consequence is he denied the Lord three times. He knew the Lord, but then he denied him three times. The remorse, feed my sheep. Oh, Father God, you know I love you. Then feed... He was so sorrow. He was so. But then he said, you know what? I'm going to follow you, Lord, and I'm going to feed your sheep. And then look what the consequence was. A fruitful life. Laying on hands and signs and wonders. Oh, raising the dead. Oh, oh, making the blind see. See, he changed his whole life because he looked at the consequence. Adam and Eve, we know what their consequence is. You know what? They ate of the tree. But you know what? Then God also grew the whole generation from all of them. Oh, he multiplied them and blessed them because they took a look at, you know what? We made one wrong decision. I don't want to make another wrong decision. So let me take a look at what the consequence is going to be. Because you know what? I, I don't like this plowing. I like whenever it was just growing and it did it own, its own thing within this garden. Uh, can I go back? Because I, I like just picking off the fruit and not having to work. I love this. I love that the line comes up and I can pet. This is the biggest kitty, kitty cat I've ever had in the house. I love this little cat. Oh, you know, now I'll go pet one. Ooh, see what you come back with. Maybe a chicken wing. Esther, Esther. Yeah, Esther, she had a look at the consequence. If I don't do this, my people will perish. But if I do this, this could happen. But this is what God's telling me to do. God wants me to go before the king. I, I, I'm going to go in prayer and fasting. I'm going to make the right decision. And by that, she was able to save all of her people from perishing. Esther, Esther. How about Hezekiah? Hey, Lord, you know what? I repent. I'll give you 15 more years. There's just things within our lives that we need to take a look at. Noah. How about Noah? Noah's consequence was, you know what? Hey, if I don't build the ark, then we all die. But see, if I build the ark, then you know what? I'm going to save my life. I'm going to save my family's life. See, I'm going to save the cattle. I see God's not going to have to create you some beef in pork chops anymore. You know, God's not going to create, you know, he doesn't have to create the chicken anymore because, you know, I'm going to go ahead and build this ark. And the consequence was life. That's why we're here. Because life continued. So, since we know what God says, how do we apply it to our life? How do we apply this? What we do is we take a look and we look at the consequence. 
And, and, and we need to take a look and be honest with ourselves and not figure out the consequence for our good, not figure out that the consequence what we want, because the consequence that we want might not be what God wants. So we need to take a look at every decision and what's going to be the consequence if I do this. Now, let me line this consequence up with the, with the word of God. Is this correct? Is this really what God wants me to do? Is this consequence something that that God is calling me to do? You know, are, am I focused on the blessing or am I focused on the cursing? Do I want to make God happy or do I not want to make God happy? Do I want to live a prosperous life? Do I want to pass down, you know, things to my children? Do I want to be the friend that I'm called to be? Do I want to be the best neighbor that I could possibly be? What do I want to be? I want to take a look at the consequence in my life. I want to apply this. I want to put this in, in an application that, you know, within my life that I, I'm sitting here before I make the choice, I'm looking at the consequence. Oh, oh, you know what, Lord, I, I'm going to go out and rob a Circle K. You know, just something, I'm going to go out and rob a Circle K because I need some extra money. You know, that sounds great. Oh, hallelujah. But you know what, let's line that consequence up with the word. Well, okay, l l what is the consequence? Oh, the consequence, if I go in to the Circle K, do I wear a mask or do not, not wear a mask? No, that's not the decision. The decision is, the consequence is, you know, if I go in and I decide to steal, Instead of pay for, I'm going to come out. I'm going to have a new set of bracelets. I'm going to miss my family because I'm going to be in jail. I'm going to have, have this record upon me. I, 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 I'm not going to be the person that I was. No one's not going to trust me. Now I have a consequence that I have to live with the rest of my life. That's why I need to take and line up the consequence with God's word and says, you know what? God said, do not steal. God said, do not steal. Go in and buy. Go in and purchase it. So I go in and purchase my Snickers. I go in and purchase my, my Coca-Cola. I come out. Now my belly's full. Now I'm good. Now I get to go home. I get to see my family. Now I, I, now I get to watch Joshua grow up. Now I get to go back to work the next day. Now I get to provide for my family because now I've weighed the consequences. This isn't right. God's word says it's not. This is right. Now I can go this direction. That's how we apply it to our life. See, Deuteronomy eleven twenty six says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Deuteronomy 8, 1 says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. That's how we apply it. We take a look at the consequence. What's going to be the result? Is that the result that lines up with God's word? What if I remember God before the decision? Now I look at God, I pray about it. God, should I buy this car? No, because you don't know what's coming down the road and I do. Well, would you tell me? No, I don't have to tell you what's coming down the road. All I need to do is tell you, don't buy the car now. Well, what's the consequence if I go ahead and buy it out of your, your will? Well, you know what? You know, the repo company is going to be calling you. All of a sudden, you know what? Visa is going to be calling you and you're going to get a call from Visa and you're going to answer and not know who they are. Hey, hello. Hey, you know, yeah, this is Visa. You know, we've been sending you some bills and you haven't been paying attention. Beep. You know, at the tone, please leave your name and number. All of a sudden now it's going to go to an answer machine because that's not the consequence you want. That's not the consequence God wants for you. God has created you. He has made you perfect. He's not a God that makes mistakes. Oh, we might have walked through some things. We might have done some choices that we didn't want, but God is a restorer. God God says, you know what? Look upon him and he'll restore everything. He wants you to put this in your life. So if we leave here today and we start taking a look at what the consequence is, line the consequence up with our word, with God's word, and then we start making the right choices based off this, then we don't have to worry about the consequences after that decision. All we can do is walk along and receive the fruits, receive the blessing. I don't have to look over my shoulders. I don't have to look over and see who's following me because I know that God's protecting me. I know that when someone says, you know what? I made the right choice. God is blessing. When they say, oh, you're an enemy. God says, you know what? If you just make the right choice, I'll defeat the enemy for you. I'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it, but you, you have to look at the consequence. The consequence, if I do it, I'm going to mess it up. The consequence, if I turn it over to God, oh, he's going to bless. He's going to protect. And I'm going to go and live a fruitful life, a blessed life. He said, you know what? There's some of you that's dealing with some consequences that you can't let go. And I want you in closing. I want you to start taking a look at some of those consequences. 
And I want you to let those consequences go. Because God's word says he is a restorer of those. Joel 2.25, it says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. God will restore anything the enemies try to steal, to try to kill, try to eat, try to destroy. God says, you know what? I can do all things. I was able to stop time and keep the sun out long enough so you defeat the battle. Oh, if God can do that, God can restore time. If God's created the earth, he's created you, he's created and done all things, then God is a God that can restore all things. Oh, we have to start looking at the consequence for now on so we don't end up in that same cycle, that same rut. Oh, you know what? So many times I hear, you know, I keep doing the same thing over. I, it, you know, it seems like it's every three years this happens or every month this happens. And I'm telling you, if you start looking at the consequences within every decision, you'll start breaking those generation curses. You'll start breaking those cycles in your life. You'll start living abundantly and above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. It's God's word. But I don't want you to focus on the bad. I want you to know how to live out your rest of your life. I want you to let go of those bad consequences that's holding you back. All oh, those that you're holding on to the past, the past is the past. Oh, we're looking at consequences now that sets the future. We can't change the past, but I can sit here and I can look at what my consequences are that will change the future, that will affect the future. And now, right now, I'm going to look at those consequences. I'm going to invite the Lord into every decision, and I'm under construction to make sure that I invite Him and in prayer, that there's no decision that I make without him. Oh, take a look at the Old Testament. It teaches you how to eat. How much cancer do we have? Oh, how much obesity? How much things that we have in the world? Because we're not looking at what God says to eat. Oh, blessing or cursing. But God did away with the Old Testament. Well, I'll prove you wrong. Jesus said he came to fulfill. In Hebrew, the word fulfill means he came to preach. He came to preach, not to do away with. The New Testament wasn't out when Jesus was here. He preached from the old. The New Testament was after his death. I believe all this word. I believe this word establishes whether you want to be fruitful or if you want to be just walking a mediocre. But you got to let the past go. You got to let it go. And you got to take a look at the next consequence for your future, so your future will be blessed. It doesn't matter what's ever happened. God's a restorer of time. God's a restorer of time. It says in Romans 6, 23, I know we know this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Hello, this is Pastor Daniel. I hope the message has touched you and I hope that, you know what, Holy Spirit's there tugging on your heartstrings. And I'm hoping that you are willing to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I know for me, it was a young child that I gave my heart to the Lord, but then, then I didn't live uh, my relationship for the Lord. I lived my relationship through my parents for the Lord. And then there was a time in my life where things just went wrong and went bad and, and the Holy Spirit was tugging at my heart and saying, hey, look, you know what, it's time. And I got on my knees, I cried out to the Lord, and I made Jesus my Lord and Savior. And that was my relationship with Him. And I know He's calling you right now into a relationship. And I just wanna give you an opportunity to just enter in and give Jesus Christ your life and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. It's this simple. All you have to do is close your eyes and bow your head and say, dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and change my life. And I surrender my will to you in Jesus' name. If you've said that prayer, I'm telling you, you are saved. You are on the way to heaven. And he just wants you to live according to his word. So get into a church, start serving, get into the word of God and make a difference in your life. Hopefully you received a word from the Lord today. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be sure to email us at admin at peak worship so that we can stay in contact with you. We want to make sure that you get plugged into a church in your area and we'll see you next time.